Morning nights. Happy Tuesday, a special uh, Tuesday edition here of Principal McArdle's Live. So I want to welcome you guys for joining in uh, on Tuesday. I hope everyone had a great three-day weekend um, and uh, enjoyed that sun. It's uh, definitely a totally different feel out there. Uh, we'll start off with uh, our birthdays today and we'll give it, let you see the roof as well. Uh, happy birthday yesterday, our normal Monday day. Uh, happy birthday uh, to our knights. And then also today, don't forget to get out uh, and send these guys some messages of uh, happy birthday and uh, c- continue that night's love all the way around. We'll take a quick look up top here for the, today's weather. Absolutely gorgeous out there. It's going to be a scorcher. Hopefully you're uh, going to be around uh, some water. Maybe you got a pool, maybe you have a hose, but it's going to be hot out there. So make sure uh, you're doing everything you can uh, to stay hydrated. Uh, we're excited for a big show today. We have two great guests. We're going to have two um, awesome uh, performances as well. Uh, we're getting ready for um, Big Wednesday uh, Fine Arts Fest. I also want to do a quick shout out uh, for Memorial Day yesterday. So many uh, great uh, people have served our country here uh, in Leroy, and uh, just uh, yesterday was a, a great day of remembrance and, uh, and, and supporting them and their families. Um, hopefully you had a chance maybe to walk by uh, this memorial here in town. Um, also, I uh, want to remind everyone that uh, the senior uh, chats uh, continue tomorrow, our Leroy Senior Chats, so we'll be posting that tomorrow, so make sure to be checking that out uh, as well on our social media. And then, as we said before here, tomorrow is our big fine arts festival. So we'll, at 6 o'clock, we're doing an Instagram Live pre-festival show. We have four nights uh, lined up uh, to be on live and then two teachers. So that'll happen at 6 o'clock. And then at 7 o'clock, we'll be posting the actual show, which will be a YouTube link uh, that you can watch on all three of our social media. So today we really wanted uh, to uh, have our show uh, be around music and, and, and performance. So that's why we have uh, chose two really good guests uh, to come on and be with us today. Uh, first guest I'm bringing on here is uh, Sarah Ball. Uh, Sarah is a 2015 grad and uh, is currently in a place that is very, very sunny uh, down in uh, Florida. So we're, we're going to have her uh, join the show here this morning. There she is. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. Thanks for uh, uh, jumping in and joining us here today. Of course. I'm excited. <laughs> How are you to have it? Good to see you. Um, yeah. Sarah is finish, just finishing up her first, first year of? Kindergarten. Oh, yes. Yeah, so my first year of kindergarten. Yeah. I graduated in December, and I started teaching when I was actually in my internship in October. So okay. it's been a, quite an experience. Yeah, what a ride. So she was back from uh, being a college grad to right back in her kindergarten. A fellow educator. <laughs> so really excited about that. So we'll talk yeah. about that. Um, and we're also going to have a live performance from her uh, here later, you know, later in the interview. Too. So uh, 2015 grad, why don't you give us a little, uh, you know, the journey from when you walked off our stage here until now. Give us a little, like, you know, synopsis of, you know, what your life has been. Yeah, so I guess it's been pretty different than what I expected it to be. Um, I went to Ohio to study violin performance for a year, and I felt like it just wasn't the right place for me, and I wasn't getting, you know, the exposure I needed, and I wasn't really enjoying it. So I moved back to New York, and I studied early education, early childhood education for a semester at GCC, and then my parents decided that they wanted to move to Florida and my brother was already down here. So didn't really have anything that was holding me back from doing that. So I just kind of took the leap and came down here and I went to Florida Gulf Coast University and then I studied uh, just elementary education. <laughs> that, and there's a picture of my parents. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, and I graduated in December and now I'm teaching kindergarten and I'm still performing on the side uh, with Jade Strings. So it's been quite an experience. Yeah, I think it's a great journey because I think, you know, in, in talking to a lot of alumni over the last, now we're in 11 weeks that we've closed. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's been cool to see that, you know, as they were here in school thinking about, I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do that. And then all of a sudden. Exactly. 
Yeah, it all works out. Yes. Talk about just kind of how you kind of like, what was the process for you to kind of make those moves? How did that affect you? And like, how much, you know, did you really have to kind of believe in yourself and, and, and kind of go with your gut? Right. So I was pretty nervous when it came to moving to Florida, just because I didn't really know anyone down here. And the only people I knew was my brother. So he was my first friend when I came down here and um, just kind of scary going to a university in somewhere you've never lived except for Ohio I've been there but that was like you know different so I came down here and I quickly made friends and actually my first statistics class that I took I met someone that played the violin and it was only I found that out by doing one of those icebreakers when everyone had to share a fact about them and the girl I was sitting next to played the violin and that's how I got connected with Jade, who is the um, owner of Jade Strings. So it quickly formed connections for me. And I found that there's actually a lot more connections down here in the entertainment business. So it's been, been great, yeah. yeah. It's really, I, you, know, I, um, I, you know, one of the things we have in, in connection is I also played violin. I, I don't play it professionally. Like <laughs> Yeah, it was it was always cool. You know, I, I you know there was obviously we don't have string a string program here. Right. Uh, really cool to you know when I first you know got here to know that you also mm -hmm. you know did the violin and I think it's it's great to see people that have those artistic or the musical you know aspects of your life. Right. And, um, but yet do something else. So here mm -hmm. you are here, but yet you're still you know playing and still performing. Right. I, what, what, what advice would you give to our kids that are, you know, that have all those different talents, but yet maybe might not go in a job field for them? Right. So my main concern was having stability in a career. So I do love kids and I love working with kids. So I felt that teaching was a nice, you know, career that would be stable you know, and give me benefits. So I went into that and I liked what I was studying. It's, it's very like people focused. So I felt like that was a good, you know, not backward, like back up, but it definitely like, I fell in love with it the more that I studied it. And I think you really just need to give things a chance because you can still do what you want and you can still study something that you might fall in love with. So I guess, Having not necessarily having a backup career, but if you do love music, definitely pursue it and just keep searching those opportunities. But also, if you think that you might enjoy something else and set something that you can study, that would definitely give you a career. I think that's a good path too. But also, I just think that everything kind of works out, and you just have to really go with your gut and make those take those risks because. You never know what you could be experiencing somewhere else. So, well, it's really cool to be by, be diverse as well because obviously, mm -hmm. you know, the more skills that you have and, and can have confidence around, I mean, the more yeah. opportunities that come around. Which definitely back in uh, you know here you are back <laughs> senior year uh, last concert here with us. You know, speaking of like you know you you, you know your senior year here, but just in general, I mean, looking back, what are some of the memories that, you know, that, that you still have, or you still think of, um, you know, as far as being a knight, you know, being yeah. here with Roy, I mean, what are some things that are still sticking with you? Cause I mean, you're, you're pushing five years out. Here. I know, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, a lot of memories. I mean, I really enjoyed being a part of the musical. That was a big part of the high school for me. It was really fun being involved in the homecoming court and the prom and all of that was just really fun. And I just think, you know, there's just a lot of opportunities to build your like social skills and your confidence, especially with performances, because that was a big thing for me, you know, being able to get in front of a crowd and the more you do it, the more you know, comfortable you are and you get more exposure. So I think having those opportunities to perform, you know, even like singing national anthem and stuff like that was a big, big part of being at Leroy definitely yeah absolutely and, and, I, and I also found this gem here <laughs> oh um, my goodness your counselor day and you know, I, you know oh, like, yes. like that program obviously is, you know is really really special but the, the connection that you have here is like so our current seniors are you know <laughs> seventh graders in this picture oh my gosh I know it's crazy. I see Paul and I see uh, Kaya there and, yeah 
kind of a cool connection that you know, <laughs> guys, you, know, you were the peer counselors for our current seniors class. It's crazy <laughs> thinking like that. Like 20, 20, you know, but mm -hmm. yeah, you know, so full circle. Yeah. I remember seeing all those kids up on the stage with the 2020 at their graduation. I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> like, that seems so far away. And now it's here. And it's like, whoa. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so why don't we move in uh, to, to a little performance here? You know? sure. excited, to, excited to see you uh, perform and uh, let's see what you got. Absolutely. So this is my electric violin that I have. Oh, wow. I bought it in December. So I've been doing a lot of gigs with it, so I felt like it was, you know, time to invest in something like this. So I'm going to play Senorita, if you guys know that one. So I'm going to make sure my speaker's working, and you can let me know if you can hear. Yeah, yeah, take your time. No pressure. I'll bring it up here. There you go. Kind of a fun setup in here. <laughs> Trying to make it work on live but can you hear it yes yeah? okay all right <laughs> great thanks so much thank the, you the, the electric because uh, i saw this one here i was like wow that's yeah like, that's like legit i mean i saw yeah. it. so tell us about the 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 this jade uh strings i think yes. that's on the facebook page or the business page and saw you know mm -hmm. performances and i mean you guys kind of do a lot of stuff that you you know you yeah <laughs> the stuff that we do is pretty you know it ranges from weddings to special events. Like we've done fashion shows. We do a lot of styled shoots, which is basically for marketing. So we'll dress up and go to these photo shoots. We did one at the Biltmore in Miami, which was pretty fun. You have to wear like really expensive <laughs> wedding dresses and just, it's fun to dress up like that. And we'll do corporate events, a lot of stuff like that. So what did we just do? Oh yeah, we played for the Who. <laughs> So that was really fun as in the orchestra. So yeah, I've, I felt like there's been a lot of um, different opportunities that I wouldn't necessarily have found if I hadn't, you know, moved around and made those connections. And this connection of this Jade Strings happened in an icebreaker in a class. Is yes. That, is that crazy? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that just shows, goes to show that even if you're going to school and you're not sure what you want to do, like, you still make those connections and as time goes by the, everything kind of happens you know and i was really scared i remember my senior year i was like i don't know what i want to do i remember going to the guidance counselor and she was kind of like well you can do anything you want you know like you just you just got to do it and you just have to put whatever you know effort in that you need to do and you can do anything so i mean that was kind of Another part of Leroy that I remember just being like, okay, like, you know, I got to just stick to it and, you know, eventually I'll find my way. So, yeah, I'm st I still feel like I'm figuring out what I want to do. Like, ultimately, I definitely want to do some more performances and see where that takes me. But definitely 
having the career with children is a big part of my life and it's really rewarding as you may know <laughs> it, it's it's really cool to be you know like you're, you're teaching kindergarten during the day and then at night yeah. you know i mean that, like that, that that's a pretty like good Hannah montana <laughs> right. best of both worlds really but. About just life as a kindergarten teacher like you know you, you obviously you're walking you walked into probably the toughest year to be a teacher uh, mm -hmm. and let alone be teaching kindergarten uh, yeah. <laughs> for you? so it was it's been a really um, really it's not it's been difficult but definitely an eye-opening experience and definitely learned a lot um, the class I walked into had been kind of you know going around with different teachers so it was a little difficult on them so definitely it took some adjusting for them to get used to another new face in the room because I came in in October um, and that being my first classroom, you know, was kind of scary, but I love the kids like they, they change you as a person, you know, they make you see life differently because you see their struggles and you see what they go through and you realize that, you know, your struggles are real, but everyone else has them too. And you know, things, life is pretty great. So it's best to take, you know, everything not for granted and just be grateful for what you have. And especially those kids, because, you know, they come into your room and you may be the only person that, you know, they get a hug from or they get, I love you from. And that makes a big difference, definitely. Yeah. I got a dom here sending you a little. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I see. Comment. I'm a dom. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, yeah, it's, Como se va? it's just really cool to see how, you know, like, again, you guys, you know, leave here and go out and do great things and, and, and you know, impact, you know, impact so many people and, and, and then, you know, take your talents to the next level. So yeah. we're really proud of all the things that you've done and, and taking Thank you. to come on today. We're, we have our big fine arts night, which uh, I believe your senior year was our, was the first annual fine arts uh fine. yeah being outside in front of the uh out in the front uh, bus loop there we had oh, food yes. did some you know had the wind going yeah. uh but yeah it was uh you know unfortunately we're not able to do that this year so we're streaming uh show that'll be going on tomorrow night so um hopefully you can uh, come That's back awesome yeah i'd love to see that <laughs> Well, well, listen, we appreciate your time and uh, we wish you luck moving forward. And, you know, man, you're you. a great job. And please send all of this great weather our way. Cause it's I will. Yesterday I thought it was going to pour, but we had sunshine all day till about six o'clock. It was great. <laughs> and you're heading off to, uh, to uh, a, a staff meeting and then you got to clean out your classroom. Yes, a lot of under the year stuff going on. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, thank you so much. It's great to see you and congratulations on all your great stuff. Thank you so much for having me. I All had right. so much fun. All right. Thank Bye. you. Awesome. So, so cool to have uh, Sarah Ball join us, 2015 grad, um, rocking some, uh, rocking some, uh, some strings on an electric uh, violin today. So she's upped her game uh, in, her, in her equipment as well. So really cool. Um, our next guest, uh, we're also going to be getting, you might have thought maybe that was a typo, um, but uh, our next guest, we're also going to be having a little performance uh, with as well here we have mr uh, regis pollard uh, is going to join uh going to join the show here i'm going to bring him on board uh we're excited to have mr pollard want to thank uh sarah again for uh coming on great representation uh, of our school um and now we'll, we'll go from one teacher uh that's teaching uh you know kindergarten to our business teacher mr pollard good morning how are you good morning can you hear me okay sorry i hear you i can see you you got you know i love that you got, got the yeah you know, you're always you're always ripping on me for not uh, being in enough Leroy swag. So I figured I'd uh, deck it out for this interview here. I love it. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, if, if anyone you know is on Twitter world, they will see Mr. Pollard wearing, you know, a Cal Mom hoodie. And I want to start there because I think that's really important. Yeah. Um, you know, Mr. Pollard is a is a Caledonia Cal Mom alum, proud alum um, and, and represents, you know, a great group of guys that uh, that he went to went, went to high school with and i think you know everyone that you know that goes to school you know if you're fortunate to have a couple of good friends you know i think that that's you know that, that's really pre you know that that's special 
But if you are in a group like Mr. Pollard was, you know, going through high school, I mean, man, you, you, you got some, you got an all-star cast around you. Talk to us just about, you know, you know, your high school experience, you know, down the road here from Leroy and, and how, you know, how you've kind of, you know, you stayed local um, and have, yep. have some great friendships, uh, you know, with those guys as everyone's kind of also stayed local and moved on with their, uh, with, with their life. Yeah, I mean, uh, I stayed local mostly because of my family, but also my friends. Uh, I see some of them, uh, you know, getting excited uh, in the comment section here already. So uh, it's just surrounding yourself with, you know, great people. And, and that's what I've kind of learned in life very quickly is you want to have good people around you, especially in low times like this. Uh, it really helps to have that kind of support group. So my family and friends, I mean, they mean everything people are what I live for. So that's why I became a teacher and stuck around the area is all because of the people. And, in, and also you won a, a sectional title uh, in high school as well. Uh, baseball, yeah. correct? What, what was the question? Sorry. Uh, yeah. All right. You won a sectional title uh, back in high school as a, on the baseball team, correct? Yeah. Yeah. We, I mean, we're a competitive group of guys to this day. We're still competitive. Uh, I try not to look in the past too much, but it was really cool. At the time, it was definitely a significant event. Uh, we had gone to three straight – well, that was the third straight sectional title, and we had lost the previous two. So uh, it, we, we were pretty determined to win, uh, and we had some pretty good talent uh, surrounding the whole team. So it was pretty exciting to be a part of that. Yeah, it was, it was, it was actually one of the first times I – was when I first moved up here in this in this area um, in Caledonia, and, and my wife and I, you know, we were able to kind of watch those games uh, during that run. And uh, you know, little did I know that he would be, you know, here working at Leroy down the road, and as would I. Uh, but it was it was a real ma a really magical run. And this year, you were supposed to be a uh, first time uh, JV baseball coach for us. You know, think you know, of all the teams that you've been on and the team that you want to create here, and just good business teams that are together. What are some of those like skills and some of those uh, characteristics of what makes up a good team? I think it starts, like I said, I kind of mentioned before, it's the people, um, you know, on, on my teams that I've had success in the past, it's the people that are, uh, they have the desire to be great and not just satisfied. I always have the saying that I want to be better than yesterday. And that's kind of how I live my life, not only in athletics or sports, but just everything in general. Like, even though yesterday was good, you know, winning that sectional title back in high school, that was great. But what are you doing today? What are you doing tomorrow? Um, so those are the types of things that drive me. When you surround yourself with people that have that kind of same mindset and mentality, uh, you can do pretty crazy things. So that's just kind of the mentality I carry. And uh, hopefully that improves. It doesn't mean that yesterday, you know, I, I don't, make mistakes or fail or things like that it's just I'm always trying to improve and learn even if it was great yesterday okay that was great but how can I even be better so I take that with my profession and teaching just trying to be a better teacher especially during this time online stuff it's, it's difficult it's a challenge but uh it's an exciting challenge so that's so, kind of reality you know, you, you in the in the classroom here, you know, teaching a variety of business courses. Um, you you have your you have your MBA as well. Uh, you know, you know, very uh, very equipped. You know, you know, in, in this area, very savvy. You know, what has it meant to you to be have, have been a, a teacher here? Uh, this is your first full year. You've been here part time. Uh, you know, a, a great split that we had between here and Alba, and uh, you also. Yeah softball there as well but it's great to have you you know full-time here what has it been for you to have a, a classroom of your own full-time you know working with our knights and, and and teaching these courses yeah i mean i love leroy i mean shout out to alba too i loved it over there too coaching the softball team and teaching over there we had some great students but leroy is just a special place and it, it's a little bit of a challenge to say that coming from cal mom you know a lot of my friends and people that were uh, close to me were always uh, a little upset that I went over to Leroy, but uh, it's really an awesome place. Everyone from the top down, um, I mean, administration, you guys are so supportive. And then the other teachers around uh, me, I mean, the students get excited when they come to class because of the, the quality of talent. And uh, so it's just exciting to be at a place where, uh, you know, you're surrounded with great people. And that's Leroy. And it's just, it, I mean, what a cool school to be doing. E even during this 
you know, unusual time to be doing something like Instagram Live. I mean, how many schools are putting out shows like this? I mean, it's just, there's so many opportunities at Leroy, and, and it's just exciting to kind of be a small part of that and, and to uh, be able to see some of the students take advantage of these awesome opportunities. And one of the cool things as far as opportunities is concerned is you, you know, you really do a great job of, you know, um, getting your students uh, in front of other business owners and, and entrepreneurs and, you know, and, and exposing them in a lot of different things. I mean, both you and Mrs. Ford really pride yourselves on that in our, in our booming uh, business uh, department. I got, you know, uh, one of your uh, fellow Cal Mom alums here and also my barber uh, from Cal. Uh, uh, and, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, why you bring in, you know, businesses and how that has kind of impacted your classroom. Yeah, it, it plays into my philosophy of just trying to give students hands-on experience. And, and Mrs. Ford and I kind of share that same uh, I, ideology where we just want to give students, you know, okay, it's cool to read a book and, and things like that and to study and do assignments, but what's really happening in business and to try to get them in front of people uh, that are, are doing the job and, and learn, even if it's just one thing they take away from a conversation. So bringing in people like Corey who have gone through, you know, entrepreneurship, and I'm sure next year when he comes in, he's going to have a lot to talk about with um, all these different phases and closing down and how do you adjust and how do you uh, become creative in business when, you know, life throws you curveballs and things like that. So being able to hear those experiences, uh, it's just an, it's another uh, addition to all the content and stuff we cover in class. So I, I think it's fun for the students. They, they typically love the guest speaker day. I don't know if it's because they don't have to listen to me or just because they're learning stuff, but uh, it, it's one of the great uh, things that we do. And it's not just me, Mrs. Ford and a lot of other teachers bringing in uh, guests that it's it enhances the classroom so i love to do it and i always try to you know my rule is try to bring one in every single month so uh on the virtual learning it's a little different but uh next year i'm looking forward to doing that as well yeah. continue that. now one of the things that you know we, you know we love pushing people here to to be the best that they can be and and i and that includes staff as well and you know i came to you uh you know last year probably before this time but in, in wanting to add our computer science course um, which then meant that you were going to have to dive into some real serious training. Uh, and little did we know that that would be happening in Oakland, California. So yeah. you flew across the country, spent a few weeks there uh, training and learning about computer science. And this is the first year that we offered uh, Project Lead the Way slash AP computer science. Talk about just, you know, the, the ability to like, and you're a master at this as far as, you know, expanding what you can do, uh, you know, learning new things and always kind of pushing yourself and then tie that into our computer science experience. Yeah, I mean, well, I appreciate the, the compliment, but, it, it, you know, going to a tech school like RIT, we did some coding and we learned some uh, coding languages. Now there's literally hundreds of popular coding languages out there. So going to the training definitely um, helped to open my eyes to some of the different languages and kind of dive into one of the main languages right now is Python, but it's such a cool topic because I was just looking at all the senior graduates this year and how many of them are, you know, pursuing computer science and compute, whether it be engineering or uh, computer science degrees themselves. And it's such a important thing to have. And that's why I'm glad the school uh, took advantage of this opportunity and, and I'm glad they selected me to teach the courses because uh, in the next couple years, you're just going to continue to see it grow and grow. So the course has been awesome. Obviously, it's the first year, so there's some bumps in the road, especially with the, the situation now. Um, our final is actually due today. So if there's any students watching, they better be uh, submitting their final exam. But it's, it's a very hands-on course. It's challenging. Uh, coding is a lot of the times just problem solving, which I love. Uh, my, I talk about it all the time with my students. They know it's the number one skill employers look for. I, I always like to say that because that, that truly is what makes us different from computers is we can look at issues from a human aspect. And uh, while they're very logical, we can kind of think about the illogical ways to solve problems as well. So uh, it, it takes, you know, humans to be able to modify and change and debug code and it's been an awesome experience. I love the course. It's a new challenge for me teaching because it's a little bit of a uh, side 
uh, difference from the business world, but it's still relevant to business and uh, I, I enjoy it and I look forward to next year. And it's a little bit easier when you're there and able to help students uh, to kind of correct and modify some of their coding. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the other reasons why we have you on today was is to do a little live performance. And I think yeah. you know, a lot of people, I mean, like we could probably have a, uh, and this is all good. I mean, we, we could probably have an interview with you of all the talents that a lot of people maybe don't know. Because, you, know, you know, Mr. Powler is a very talented guy. Uh, also, I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, so that'll be for another day. But uh, let's uh, let's move into the live performance. And, and when and how did you start playing this instrument? And how did you learn it? And then let's hear what you got. Um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll go over. Thankfully, I, I happen to have a piano right here, uh, which is convenient. But I do have to say, um, hopefully this is a good spot where yep. you all yep. sort of see me. Um, I, I started playing piano probably because of my family, like, uh, growing up, my brother's a great musician. He took piano lessons and things like that. And my dad is a phenomenal piano player. So just growing up, they would always be playing piano in the house or I'd be listening to music. And I was like, I want to do that. Like, I really respect and like listening to other people. But I'm always that type of person that's like, OK, that's cool. But can I do that? Can I let me challenge myself and learn? So I, I probably started to pick it up when I was younger, around seven or eight. But then I got serious about it, probably junior high or high school. And uh, it was just something that, you know, music is so powerful, like it's emotional, but it's also challenging if you're trying to learn it. So I just love that challenge and love to be able to do it. I have no idea how you figured out um, how I, I had this talent, because it's something that I just keep keep to myself. Like, you know, Sarah was on earlier. She's amazing. She's playing for the who like I, I play for my niece who's, you know, a year old. That's probably the most important person that I've played for. So um you know, it's just something that I do to relax, and it's it's also a challenge. You know, instead of sitting in front of the TV or something and watching, you know, your fourth hour reality TV, I was like, I, I want to do something cool and, and challenge myself to learn. So I am in no way as talented as uh, the other guests, but, uh, you know, we'll try to follow it up um, for this. But for this, you, you know, you asked me to come on, play some songs, and I figured to engage the audience that we have here, we got like a dozen or two people here. If you have a request, uh, <laughs> you can throw one in. And, and to keep, since there's millions of songs, I was going to keep it to Disney songs because I know a lot of Disney music. So I'll give some people uh, a thought to think about it. Uh, and, and hopefully you can get a response or two. And hopefully I know the, the movie. Now, you any the movie. in front of you. So does that mean that like it's all lodged in here? I mean, like. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. So. I never really, t I didn't take lessons and I don't really know how to read music. So it's just all in the brain. Uh, so I just keep the, the, the songs in my brain and I'm able to remember them for the most part, but it requires a lot of practice, right? To be able to remember all the songs and notes. So if you gave me, yeah, there's no sheet music here or anything because it wouldn't do me any good. I, I wouldn't be able to read it. Uh, I, I have tried to learn reading music, but it's extremely challenging. So Usually I just learn by ear or by listening or sometimes just consulting other people, especially growing up, like we'd be playing something and, and you know, my dad would come over and be like, no, it's this and my brother. So that's kind of how we learn as a family. Okay. All right. Well, and, I don't think there been any requests. Do you have one, Mr. McCarty? Do you have a favorite Disney movie or some? Yeah. I, well, I mean, I like the Lion King. I mean, I, we've been watching the Lion King before. So, I mean, if you want to go Lion King, let's go. Yeah. You know, I, I know a couple from The Lion King. Uh, we'll, we'll start with this one. And, and I do have to apologize. You know, I want to get my piano tuned, but I don't think that's part of the phases. So well, it might be a little out of tune, but hopefully you can hear it. Here, I'll play one of the classic songs from The Lion King, a little clip, if that's cool with you. Thank you. 
pretty good. I mean, that's 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 legit, man. I, mean, that's I, legit. I don't know how long you want me to go with this. Well, 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 we have another request came in for Beauty and the Beast here. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that that that's a my that was actually my sister's uh, wedding song. So, oh. And, and she wanted she was gonna ask me to play it, but I was doing some other things and. Okay. And, Plus, I don't really perform except for on Instagram Live for you guys, so we'll try to uh, find it here. That's a little yeah. beauty piece there. Listen, okay, let's do one more. Um, yeah, uh, one more. Our nurse, uh, Mrs. Uh, Danson, said uh, a whole new world from Aladdin. You got that in there? Yeah, okay. Look at this yeah, guy. It's, it's, actually, it's actually in the same key, so it's a little easier. Let's, let's try to find it. It's a little higher at the start. tell you i mean so can't read doesn't read music self-taught and doesn't and then just has it all up in there i mean like that's a lot of great stuff right there i mean it's and it's and that i think it's an inspiration for you know for you know people watching for i mean i'll, I'll give you one of my secrets so one of my secrets yeah. is in on my bucket list i want to be able to play piano like that has been i've been saying that to my wife for a long time always wanted to do it so like i mean like now you got me going like i might leave huh. five and just start going to the stage and just seeing what I can do. Right. But yeah. I think it's great to see, you know, well, I'm not going to waste time watching reality TV or binge, did, binge flit Netflix. I'm going to go learn something new. I think that's like the best learn, you know, lesson of the day. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I didn't start there. I think I started like bad day or something, you know, but or really simple. So it, it's definitely improved, but it, it requires a lot of practice and time, but you got to start small. And I certainly didn't sound like that when I first started piano. Um, but, you know, it's it's just something that, like I said earlier, just challenge yourself, you know, keep on challenging yourself. And for me, that's the way I like to uh, spend my free time. You know, I have other hobbies and other interests, too. But uh, just being able to play music, it, it's something, you know, I don't normally do for other people. But, you know, you asked me on here and I was like, sure, whatever. But for me, you know, music's a big part of my life, too. So that's why I'm excited that you guys, are, you know, representing music and the, the music week that you have here. Yeah, well, we can't thank you enough. Tomorrow's the Fine Arts Fest and you're going to be able to see more, uh, lot, you know, performances like this in our pre-show pre at 6 o'clock um uh tomorrow night and then we'll also at seven o'clock is our actual show so people listening you know please come back and see that tomorrow uh mr Pollard, listen you got a lot of fans here great great messages coming in i see uh steve gaffney fellow uh cal mom alum uh, yeah. uh coach shelton so uh, great to see those guys showing up and yeah uh you know 
and uh, Mr. Uh, Grant Gilligan, Mr. Well-Rounded. I think, yeah, I think anyone watching, it's, a, it's something that we always want to see is, is people as diverse as you can, have as much skills as you can. And now you're going to have to be ready for Mrs. McClain coming at you to do a little uh, action, you know, with, uh, with our chorus. So, yeah, it's, it's you know, that's, that'll be scary, but that'll be all right. So. Well, listen, thanks so much for joining and being a part of our big uh, Fine Arts uh, Fest kickoff show today. And then, like I said, tomorrow, come on back at 6 o'clock and enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, hopefully it'll be uh, full throttle. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for doing this. This was awesome. Thanks. Yep, absolutely. All right, Regis, we'll see you. Yeah. Thank uh, Mr. Pollard for coming on. Uh, Dr. Reeds, they call him. Uh, great, great interview there. And also want to uh, thank, uh, you know, Sarah Ball, 2015 grad, being a part of the show. Really appreciate both of them and, and sharing some music. All right, we'll finish quickly here with a couple quick questions for some free swag. Uh, first one in, uh, you know, gets that free swag. Here we go. Last Monday... Uh, we talked to the uh, the uh, two twins, uh, the Angler twins. Uh, what happened uh, to one of them during their senior prom? Uh, if you watched last week, you have the inside scoop of one of them. Something happened during their senior uh, prom at Mercy Grove. Uh, what happened to, uh, to him or her, I'll say. I don't want to give it away. But we had uh, both Jamie and Dave Angler, uh, the twins, last week. And one of the things we talked about was... Uh, cool little thing that happened at the prom. So if you remember that, uh, that's a pretty tough one. Mrs. Lowe's up in the game. The second question that we're throwing out there uh, is what activity, the other guest we had last week, uh, what activity did Mrs. Netschke do on Fridays in her classroom? So if you're a student of hers, that should be really easy. Uh, maybe if you watched the show last week, um, and you know, it might be a little tougher, but we were looking for what she does on Fridays in her class, and then we're looking to see what happened to, and I'll give it away to Dave, um, you know, at the prom um, when he was a senior. That's Dave Angler. So those are our two questions. Why we wait to see if anyone wants to answer those. I just want to remind you again that tomorrow at 6 o'clock will be our Instagram live pre-show for our fine art show. That will be right here, 6 o'clock. We have four students. Two of them will be doing live performances. And then we also will be interviewing two teachers. And then at 7 o'clock, we'll be posting the YouTube link to watch the 2020 virtual fine arts festival so we're really excited to be able to uh, keep that going this is going to be our sixth annual um, and that'll be tomorrow night uh, at seven o'clock on instagram facebook and twitter so uh it looks like mrs Lowe might have stumped the uh the audience today which is fine I and mean, we have we've been doing this for 11 weeks i don't think we've had a stump uh, but we'll go with the stump today. Again, I want to thank both of our, uh, our guests today, uh, Mr. Pollard and Sarah uh, uh, Ball, 2015 grad, for joining today. And Knights, get out and enjoy that sun. Make sure you get the uh, you know you know you know get the, the sunblock on. I got a little red here. The Irish skin doesn't hold it well uh, this weekend. But make sure you take good care of your skin. Hope everyone has a great day. And as always, go Knights. <laughs>